All right, so we're looking at the Aussie dollar here. Uh, what happened was we were we were bullish. We found resistance at this level here, this 7,700 level. Uh, and, and what you can see, we held, we held, we held. We had these long candle, long test candle wicks up here, held that level. We came up and tested again. And as we were bullish, we we're putting in these higher highs, outside returns. And you can see here, as we put in this outside return, we came up, tested one last time before violating this outside return, putting in a potential rotation here. And as you can see, we've come up and we've tested the high again, um, and we haven't quite broken through. So we've held this level. We've seen some relief. And as we drop down to the 240, what you're going to see in this zone is, um, as we've pushed up, you can see markets put in this head and shoulders formation here. Okay, and we violated the neckline. So this is the neckline of the head and shoulders. Okay, we've broken and closed below. I love these. Uh, I love the look of these candle wicks here because what this tells me is there was a lot of bearish pressure here being rejected by the bulls. So we push down, we get rejected. Push down, get rejected. Push down, get rejected. Right. So if we can break and close below this low. The chances are, if we push back up here, this support should become resistance, okay? Because there's some protection in this area. These are levels you want to pay attention to. And the question is, if we do break down, well, how can we get involved in a move to the downside? So if we drop down to a lower time frame, we're going to go down to the daily time frame because we are, we're going to drop down to the day trading time frame because we're in the live room. Um... So we can take a day trade and we can see how we can get involved here. Well, first of all, I know that if this, as we are bearish, we're bearish here, right? We've already broken and closed below the low here. Okay, we've already broken and closed below the low. So this is a lower low. And I know that as we're bearish, we're putting in lower lows outside return, right? Lower low outside return. Lower low, the outside return held again, and then we put in a lower low. So this is the previous outside return, the previous retracement, okay? So essentially, if we're looking for a pullback and look to, to sell the high here or get involved and jump on the ride down to a retest of these lows, remember, I'm only testing for a re... I'm only shooting for a retest of lows because I'm a trend continuation trader, not a trend following trader where I'd be shooting for an extension... I'm shooting for a retest of the lows. I'm a trend continuation trader, okay? So with that being the case, the first area to look to get involved is previous, uh, the previous low, okay? So previous support become resistance. And the outside return is still a valid outside return until we've broken close out of this level here, which would then put us on rotation alert, right? Now, the problem is with this, the problem is with this is, I don't want to get involved at the start of this kill zone. This is the initial kill zone. I don't want to get involved in a trade here because if I'm shooting for a retest of the lows, I'll draw this in green. Um, if I'm shooting for a retest of the lows, then I know that if I get involved at the start of this kill zone, well, my risk reward is going to be terrible, right? And we can work out where our, our stop loss is going to go. Let's work that out now. So say 10 pips above the high. If you're placing your stop loss 10 pips above this high, that's going to put us up at 41. Front run, maybe you front run your orders a bit. So let's just say up at 43 uh, above the previous structure high. I'm going to color this in uh, red. Color this in red. We now know our stop loss is this much, right? So that's not a trade that we want to get involved with. That's not a trade we want to get involved with. But what we can do is we can say, well, I need a minimum one to one risk reward. Okay, so what we do is bring on our fib retracement, and we don't use it as a as a you know as a ratio tool. But what we do is we use it to identify that minimum one to one. So you want to be just above that fifty percent retracement level, so that you now know that you're going to get a minimum one to one trade. So all of a sudden, your kill zone gets narrowed down from this to this. Does that make sense? And we now know that we're just going to let price action come to us and get up into this kill zone before we start looking at our entry reasons, our entry rules. Now, some of you might need RSI to go overbought. 
Some of you might need a lower, low, lower closed candle, but essentially whatever your entry reason is, it all needs to happen in this zone, okay? Um, so we just wait. We wait for price action to come to us. And we know that we're if we do that, we know that we're going to be right more than we're wrong because we've tested this stuff. And we know that when we're right, we're going to win more than we lose when we're wrong. Does that make sense? Good. So we just wait now. We wait for price action to pull back up into this zone and then look for our entry rules. Now, the rules of in, the, the, the entry rules might be a lower, low, lower closed candle. The technique would be to sell at the next bar market once market puts in a lower, low, lower closed candle. So you'd sell at market. Now, another, another uh, reason for entry might be you're looking at this area here and some of you guys trade advanced patterns, right? So what you might do is you might look for that pattern formation to complete and you might enter aggressively in this zone but look to change your targets for a retest of the lows rather than taking conventional targets. Uh, that's what one of the things I tested and I'd say it's very uh, well worth testing and that's how I handle aggressive pattern trade entries okay into a trend continuation move so a couple of ideas there we're going to keep an eye on this and see what if this plays out someone said in the room how do you know it's going to pull up into this area question the answer is i don't uh, none of us know what the market's going to do we just know the probability of what's going to happen if certain um if certain things are played out right so if market does push into this area, we know the probability that there's going to be a reaction. We might be wrong, we might be right, but essentially we know that we're going to be right more than we're wrong and we win more when we're right than we lose when we're wrong. Okay, so hopefully you, uh, you got some value from that and uh, I'll talk to you shortly. Uh, one other pair I just want to go through is the pound dollar. Now the pound dollar, we've recently just violated this low following the brexit we came down we put in a lower low as well uh, and we've just broken beyond that we've broken close below the low now what that means is we're on a bearish continuation we can start to look to get short question is where can we get involved now we have no historical data this is the lowest it's been since in 30 years right so if we're doing that ipde process we've identified the market's bearish Predict where it's likely to go? Well, we, we, we're not sure, okay? All we know is we're bearish. And in order to get involved in a trend continuation trade, uh, we need some kind of pullback to enable us to get involved. So if we drop down to the 240, you're gonna see that previous structure, um, previous structure support in this zone here, we're gonna have to wait for price action to push right into that zone before we start building out that kill zone, our stops, and it's gonna be very broad. Um, so what we're looking at is if we drop down to the lower time frame, see if there's a there's an entry reason on a lower time frame. What we're essentially looking at here is this previous descending uh, wedge pattern here. Um, normally, when we get a breakout to the downside here, normally if we can come up and retest these consolidation levels, uh, they provide a a very strong level of protection and we see a reaction a bounce off of this level as, as resistance um, and there's a couple of things setting up at this level as well so this would be the first area I'm paying attention to uh, for a potential short okay there's a few other things setting up there's a potential Fibonacci uh, inversion trade those of you who are familiar with that if you bring on your 1618 inversion you've got an inversion up in that zone as well let's just draw that on so if you're looking at the um, so if you're looking at the pound dollar as a Fibonacci inversion trade, typically, uh, well, conventionally you would enter aggressively at the one six one eight inversion, and normally you're looking for um, for targets. You're looking for that six one eight retracement to target ones. So this would be your target one. Some of you look for target twos down at the lows, as well. Some of you take target ones down at the lows, but I know some of you. Conventional targets are at the 618 retracement, okay, and then for, for stops, stops are always an equaled uh, half measured move for targets. So it's always a one to one risk reward on this uh, on this trading strategy, which is 
obviously quite nice. So there would be your Fibonacci inversion trade. You'd be waiting for a pullback up into the 1618 inversion, looking to get involved, uh, aggressive sell limit, and, and look to take targets down at the 618 retracement. Or if, if you don't trade the 1618 inversion, okay, you might be waiting for a pullback up. You might be waiting for a pullback up into this kill zone. You could wait for uh, a little double top up here. RSI go overbought, a double test of this level here, uh, maybe looking for some bearish divergence on the RSI, and then you look to get involved that way. Or lastly, if you trade advanced pattern formations, you're going to see this a bit clearer on the lower time frame, but if you trade advanced patterns, if you trade advanced pattern formations, then you're going to see you've got a bat formation here, X to A, A to B, B to C and a CD completion, depending on where you take your X leg. You might drop down to a lower time frame uh, to get this X leg valid. But essentially, you've got a potential um, aggressive entry at 128.31s. So a couple of ideas there. So on the New Zealand dollar, we've got a potential trend continuation to the downside, right? We've been bullish. Bullish, bullish, bullish. Put in this higher high. Okay, and then what happened as we pushed down, you can see we violated this previous low. Now, what that means is as we drop down to the lower time frames, what you can see is I'm going to take this pattern off for now. Take this pattern off here. Uh, what you can see is again this head and shoulders formation, which we identified a little while ago. So we broke the neckline. We was looking at the neckline as head and shoulders. We violated that. So if you're looking to get short, again, similarly to what we was looking at on the pound dollar, uh, the Aussie dollar, sorry, we look for a pullback up into structure. Support becomes resistance. Right? So as we look left, where can we get involved? Well, the support is here and the structure resistance is here. So this would be the kill zone. And we go through that process again. So uh, we'll drop down the time frame. I'm going to go down to the 60 to see if there's an earlier entry. Now, you can see it's quite a broad kill zone. And in order to get a one-to-one -one here, let's just draw this on again. In order to get a one-to-one, -one, we're going to need price action to push right up here into structure. Right up here. Because if our stop loss is going to go above these highs... The ATR is going to be around 15 pips on this pair. So uh, 15 pips above this high is going to put us up at 30, say, 73 30s. Uh, let's color this in red. Okay, let's use our Fibonacci retracement tool. Look for targets. We're shooting for a retest of the lows for targets. So 50%, we want over a 1 to 1, so just above that 50%. And now we know that. We're going to be looking at this as our kill zone, right? So at this point, we can enter. We can bring on our ruler to make sure that we're not um, violating our maximum stop. So we've got 85 pips. So that's under our 100 pip stop loss rules. So anywhere in this pink zone, we can enter this with our entry rules met. Make sense? So now I know that I'm looking at this area here, draw on my horizontal line. One thing you can do is as we push up to this level here, as we push up to previous support, so this lower kill zone, and we can color this in a slightly different color, this lower kill zone, if you're looking for a pullback up into there, then what you can do at this, this area here is look for that double top entry. So previous structure support becomes resistance. We hold the initial test. The initial test, RSI goes overbought on the initial test. We then retrace and put in a second test. We hold the high. And then you look to ride it down and all of a sudden your stop loss becomes an ATR above the, the double top. And then your targets look like this. 
Does that make sense? So a different, um, couple of different ideas there. 